All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're on page six in the workbook. Um, for this paper, you're pretty much going to need just a pencil. There's going to be um, copying notes, and what I'm hoping is that you're going to start possibly thinking of some of these things when you do create um, distance. Now, a lot of times distance does happen when we're in landscapes, but some of these can happen when you're just using um, like still lifes, okay? Or an image with um, someone there and you want to make it look like something's behind something, okay? Um, one of the uh, kind of like the drawing rules in middle school is don't have it be flat, okay? This is how you not have it be flat. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in, all right? Ooh, there we are, we're gonna start one by one. Sorry, the camera is shaky. My, uh, my camera's on a very, 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 very wobbly stand. Okay, so we're first gonna start off with overlapping, okay? So overlapping is a nice, easy one. If you kind of look up and around the art room and you look at the artwork up on the wall, you'll probably notice that a lot of these artists do use overlapping. So what can overlapping look like? Okay, so we have one shot, uh, one object, sorry. Oh, hold on. All right, so we're on page six. Um, for this lesson, you're just gonna need actually a pencil. Um, I prefer a pencil compared to uh, a pen for this one because you are gonna be shading a little bit. Now, basically what I'm gonna have you do is I'm gonna have you see different ways that we can make something look like it's three-dimensional or something that's further back. Now, most times, this can apply to a landscape, but it can apply to other um, subjects of art, okay? Like for example, a portrait, a still life. If you're doing um, some kind of architecture and you want something to look like it's for the back, all of these can be applied to this, all right? So we're gonna zoom in and we're gonna look at a couple of these, okay? Let's zoom in, sorry my camera's a bit shaky. We're gonna start with overlapping, okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to copy what I'm gonna show you, okay? So we're gonna start off with a circle, color it in, okay? And then we're gonna overlap by putting a rectangle behind it. Behind it, we're gonna put some stripes to make it look like it's really overlapping, okay? Now this one, we're gonna have it look like something's going over, over, under. So over, you're gonna erase this little line, this little line. This goes over and then under, okay? So you can really see how making something look like it's overlapping really gives the impression that something is three-dimensional, that it's not all flat. Now, this is my book that I'm gonna show you examples from, okay? So overlapping, here we go. Now, back in the um, medieval times, all right, they didn't really have a lot of these um, these skills, okay? So what they did was, all right, let me zoom in. Oops, there we are. So you can kind of see that they didn't necessarily make things smaller or, or anything else, but they would overlap. They had people standing in front of each other, okay? Just to show that there was a lot of people and that there was not everything so flat. Okay, so that's what they did. All right, so let's go to the next one. Shading. So shading definitely gives a huge difference when you're trying to make something look 3D. All right, so we're gonna shade a little bit. Um, you might not know how to do this, and that's okay. Uh, this will be coming up into one of the, um, the lessons that you're gonna do. So we're gonna give the sense of volume. All right, so we're gonna do a circle. Do the best circle you can. Doesn't matter if it's not perfect, okay? And you're gonna copy this cube. All right? We're gonna shade this together to give that illusion that it's three-dimensional. Let's start with something back here. Now, how I shade is I, I push really hard and I get really light. So, I press really hard. I get really light, okay? And I fill in all the spaces. Same on the top, press kind of like a little harder, get really light. And then the front, I'm gonna get really soft to the point where I'm gonna just take my finger and I'm gonna blend it in. In the back, I'm gonna put really heavy, a shadow. 
okay? Now this gives you the impression that it's three-dimensional, that it's not flat, okay? Let's do this one. This one's a little trickier, but you can, you can do it. So we're gonna do the shading, same thing. Get later and later and later and later and later. Now you're probably like, uh, how do I do it when it's curved? Well, I kind of do that on an angle. I clean it up. All right, so far so good. Let's put a little loop in the back. Gives the illusion that it's three-dimensional. Shading helps create volume. All right, so let's, let's see what the difference between shading is, all right? All right, so this is a piece of artwork that has no shading at all, okay? This is um, by Modrian, and his stuff was all flat. Now you can tell, because there's no shadows, there's nothing. But this guy, I don't even know who this is. This is by uh, da, 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 Gallery, I think that's his name, okay? Look at all the shadows. We can tell that this pops out and this is supposed to go back, okay? So it's almost like the color is coming and going. Huge difference, okay? So shading definitely would give the impression that something is going back. Next, focus and value. Now, another word for this is atmosphere, atmospheric um, perspective. What does that basically mean? It means that you draw faraway objects more lightly, use more faded colors and less details. So if you ever notice a picture where, or anything, okay, where you're standing in front of it and you're like, everything's so clear. But then as you look back, all the way back, it's really, really not detailed. We kind of just see the outlines of it. Okay, let's see if I can find mine. All right, here we go. So a good example of this is Mona Lisa, actually. Okay, see how when we look kind of close, we can see all the wrinkles in her fabric. We can see all the details here. But when we look further and back, it gets really blurry. Now, I'm sorry, this is kind of like a, a blurry image to begin with. But as you get further and back, we kind of can tell there's a lake back there, maybe some trees, some other stuff going on. But we can't see. It's not perfect. All right, so let's give our example here. So let's do, um, you know, let's, let's kind of create some trees. All right, and these don't have to be perfect. So we got some trees right here. We have a tree right here, okay? Um, let's put, let's do a sign, okay? So we're gonna have a sign. What should we, we put on the sign? Um, let's put welcome, because we're right up close, all right? We're gonna make this a lake. But as we kind of go further back, we have a lake here. We have lighter, lighter mountains, okay? They're not so bright. They're not, you know, they're kind of dulled down, all right? And they're kind of hazy, all right? Um, there might be some trees. I'll put a couple of lines up here because you really can't tell that they're trees. They're just like images, all right? So things up close are they're brighter, you see all the details. So if we put like little details on this tree, that's up close, all right. Here we could probably even see the, the wood grain. Maybe as we get further back, we might see, you know, some of the, the details, like we might see someone, um, we could probably see someone fishing. All right, here. It's further back, it gets blurrier and blurrier and softer in color, okay? All right, so we're gonna have that. Now let's go to size. Size is a huge thing. Now remember when I was kind of pointing out that, uh, that first image with overlapping? Now, during the medieval times, they didn't really notice that size was an issue. They kind of kept everyone all the same size, which by the way, is a not quite good thing. It says, if two objects are the same size, the one farther will appear smaller, okay? So let's see, do I have an example of size? I do. All right, so let's look at that before we put that. Great example, okay, is, okay, the Sunday afternoon on the island of La Grande Jatte, okay? So we can kind of see. So this, this woman right here is very large, 
okay? But as they go further back, they get smaller and smaller. Now, quick question. What if I put her this big and then I put her all the way back on this back shore, that big? Can you tell who would be bigger? Hmm, I'm hoping you would say the woman all the way back here. Because if we had this huge, big, like, this big person, okay? Probably means she's like a statue there, all right? So let's let's kind of put this here. So, hmm, how do we kind of do this? All right, so let's do, let's do a ball. Let's do a sphere, okay? One, and as it gets further back, it should get smaller, okay? And obviously, if it is really big, look at that be huge because it's right close to us all right simple things further get smaller things closer get larger all right placement ah placement and that beautiful horizon line all right so i'm hoping that you know what horizon line is if you don't it's okay i'll let you know it says placement in horizon, uh, relation to the horizon line. Objects below your eye level look farther away if they're higher on the page. Okay, so basically what's happening here is, well, let's put this horizon line. Now, horizon line is where the land and the sky meet. A lot of times when we look at pictures or we just look outside, okay, some things go above, some things go closer. Things far, far, far away go much closer to this line. They get closer and closer and closer, okay? Now, well, how does that mean? Well, anything that's really tall is gonna look shorter and shorter. Anything that's, you know, short on the ground is gonna get closer and closer, all right? So, well, let's let's peek at that. Uh, da, 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 placement, here we are. Ah, uh, the gleaners, very nice. Okay, the gleaners are a good example, okay? So we have these big, women well they're not really big they're really close up okay so they're they look like their 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 placement is kind of above and below which is fine because they're up close but as we go back further and further okay we get closer and closer let me see if i can really zoom in so you can kind of really see okay oh sorry shaking look at these hay bales they get closer to this line even like all these these houses in the back, hard to see, but there's houses back there. They're really close to the line. Like, well, what if we want to put a mountain? Like these large, huge mountains. Okay, and they're probably the Rocky Mountains, like really huge, but far away mountains, they're small. So let's let's see what we can add here. Let's zoom this back out. All right, woo, a little too much there, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so things that are close to us, it's okay for them to go above and below. All right, so let's go back to that tree. Let's, let's put a tree there. Okay, they're okay to go above and below. As we get further back, they remember, they kind of get smaller, closer, 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 closer. So that size also happens here. Mountains, all right? So let's say we have a mountain over here Let's say we have a huge mountain. This is like monstrous, okay? Monstrous mountain, really big, a little smaller, further, further. So let's even have this mount mountain come over here. It's like a, kind of like a hill. <laughs> Bring it a little bit below, okay? A little smaller, smaller, smaller. And it gets closer and closer down here. Okay, so let's kind of look at this once again. Something close to us, okay, and toward the horizon line can go above and below. Absolutely fine. But as it gets closer on the ground, it gets closer and closer. Now, anything that is definitely higher than the, um, the horizon line, for example, a mountain or a, a building, okay, it gets smaller and smaller, but it gets closer from top to bottom, okay? Makes sense? You're probably like, oh, this one's a little tricky. It is, but it's okay. Next one, linear perspective. Now, we're not necessarily gonna go over this this year. Next year, we start kind of looking into this, okay? But you certainly can. So linear perspective is this idea 
that you can see sides of things, okay? So it says, lines appear to converge as they go off into the distance, meeting at a vanishing point on the horizon line. You're like, wow, that's looted. It is. It's this idea that, okay, here we go. So I like this. This is the um, School of Athens, okay? So it's this idea that everything, all of the sides of the walls and everything here is drawn and almost as if we can go to one spot. So if we got a ruler out and we cut, you know, pointing to everything to one spot, it would go to one spot, okay? So I'm gonna give you a nice, easy way of seeing this. Now, if you wanna look into one point perspective to be able to draw on it, absolutely fine, go for it. But I'm not expecting you to, but I want you to at least know. So what would this look like? Well, not that I'm saying you should, but remember the whole railroad track? If you start walking on a railroad track, okay, you get smaller and smaller and smaller as you go back and it gets to one point. That's what one point perspective is. Another might be, actually let's draw a rectangle here. Okay, I'm gonna erase this, okay. And ready, you're gonna take this line, go back, this line, go to this one. And you just draw a straight line, okay? Erasing time. Erase this line, and this line, this line, okay? That is what one point, one point perspective is, or linear perspective. It's the idea that when we draw, we have this one point in mind, okay? All right, so let's zoom out and let's look at everything. All right, so these are all great ways to show depth. All right, now I'm hoping that you're gonna use some of these things, uh, at least one of them, when you're creating your artwork um, during the different units, okay? And I would say, give these a try while you're doing your drawing labs, because that's a great place to practice. Okay, so once you're done, um, everything's all drawn in, please make sure you upload this into Seesaw.